Hello and welcome to episode 19 of 50 Women Over 50, a podcast for women whose personal confidence is born of experience. I'm your host, Sherry Lynn Starkey. My idea for this podcast is to interview 50 women from all walks of life who are over 50 years of age about what they've learned by this decade so that we can all learn from them too. Today, I am welcoming to the show fellow podcaster Agnes Knowles, who in retirement started the Boomer Woman podcast and continues to work as a fitness instructor in beautiful British Columbia's capital city, Victoria. Agnes is the embodiment of today's Boomer Woman. She says she's retired, but when she's not publishing her podcast and leading exercise groups, she's busy working as a carer and advocate for people with dementia and as a community volunteer. So tell me about your 50th birthday. My 50th birthday. Actually, my 50th birthday was the best birthday ever because it was the one birthday. I'm not a big birthday person, but it was the one birthday that I planned. And I decided it would go from 12 noon to 12 p.m. Like 12 a.m., I guess, midnight. And I invited everybody I knew and said, it's just a drop in. Come by when you can. You've got to sign my guest book. And if you feel the need to bring a gift, I want you to bring something that from your home that's gently used because it's all going to my favorite charity. Okay. And so I ended up with a garage full of stuff. And as the day proceeded, my, my niece was living with me at the time and she was going to like Cook's College or something. So she handled all the food and then people were coming and going. It was really fabulous. And then it was in a week, maybe Thursday evening. And it started to wind down early because, of course, everybody had to work the next day. And about nine o'clock, there was oh, six or seven of us standing in my kitchen, which you could see from the, the, the front windows. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and my, what is it, my son, my daughter, and a couple of nieces were out on my deck. And my son sticks his head in the window or in the sliding door and goes, Mom, the police are here. Huh? <laughs> I went, oh, and my one regret is that I didn't get a photograph. I was so excited. And because it was such a long stretch, I think I was like on my second glass of wine. I was not inebri- inebriated. Oh, yeah. So I went out the front door and I said, like, hi, welcome to my birthday. And these two police officers are looking at me. And you can tell they're a little embarrassed because my son was handling the stereo and it was very white. Singing <laughs> these mellow songs. And so, like, they're going like, ah, uh, is, is this a party? And I said, yeah, do you want to come in and have a drink? And they're going like, yeah, no, we can't do that. And I said, okay, just out of curiosity, what constitutes? A noise complaint. And they said, somebody phones in. Yeah. So it was kind of strange because I had actually knocked on all my neighbors' doors and left them invitations saying, this is what I'm doing. So, you know, please don't get upset. Just drop in. But so that was my 50th birthday. And I've got this wonderful guest book to this day. And Mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite memories. And I just love telling people that the police arrived at my 50th birthday party. It doesn't sound like it was a real rager, though. I didn't want a rager. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to see, you know, all my favorite people and get my guest book signed. And yeah, somebody just complained about Barry White. <laughs> oh, okay. Like maybe they, w- they would have preferred Justin Bieber or something. <laughs> Justin Bieber wasn't born when I turned, or well, maybe he was just. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Well, did you go back and check your guest list and see which one of your neighbors didn't come to your party? Well, actually, my next door neighbor, when I mentioned it to her, she said, I know which neighbor that would be. And I didn't want to know. I thought, oh, whatever. You know, if that's the type of neighbor they are, so be it. (laughs) So in the lead up to your 50s, you said you don't really do birthdays, but were you like worried? Like, oh, my God, I'm going to be 50. I'm going to be over the hill or. No, I come from a long line of long livers. Mm -hmm. So 50 to me was just another birthday, although I didn't want to plan it because, you know, sort of half century. It was it's kind of special. 60, 60 knocked me for a loop. And I did that came out of the blue. Literally, it was just like, oh, here I am 60. I have another birthday. And I woke up on that morning and I couldn't get out of bed. It was just like, oh, and I think I figured out fairly quickly that it was the first time in my life with a momentous birthday that I finally realized I had less time going forward than I had behind me. And it was scary, well, scary, sort of. I don't know quite what the word is. It was just like, took the wind out of my sails, definitely. Sounds like. So when you yeah. say you couldn't get out of bed, like 
Tell me what that means. Was it like days in bed or hours? In well, bed? Oh, I mean, I, I, I say I couldn't get out of bed. Literally, I, I did because fortunately for me, I had a client who needed breakfast on the table. And because of my client, I had to go through all the motions. But it really took probably months to finally, and I, I talked to a few people who said, oh, yeah, you know, my boss went through that at 60 or you know, this and that and the next. And finally saying, okay, let's just put that behind me and do, you know, I may have 20 years, I may have 40 years, I may have 50 years ahead of me. I mentioned that long line of long livers. And I just finally dug in my heels and started going for it. Right. So you just had like, what's the word, like a declaration, this is over, I'm finished feeling bad. I think it's a survival thing too. I mean, I I am not the type of person to go through life feeling depressed and crappy and that. It's like I I love life. I love enjoying my friends. I love enjoying my family. And long in the face, long in the mouth, whatever it was, just didn't work. So I really did have to turn it around. Right. And you said it took months. Yeah. Yeah. It did. Okay. It helped that I had a grandson by then. Oh yeah. And you know, so when you got a little guy that. It's, it's sort of the joy of your life. You really do work on putting it out there. You know, I didn't want to be that old, you know, woman that I, I see women from time to time, people from time to time, and you really look at them and think, oh my goodness, if they actually smiled, their face would crack. Yeah. And I feel sad for them. You know, maybe they've had a great life and that's just the face, but that's sort of my thought. And I didn't want to be that person or look like that person. So tell me about becoming a grandmother. How was that for you? Well, it was a surprise, but it was the coolest thing because my daughter's friend didn't stick around. So they came, my daughter and my grandson came to live with me. And to this day, he and I are good buds. His mother laughs at some of the stuff that he does at my request because I'm the only person he'd do it for. He would. He just gives his mother, you know, he's 13. He gives his mother a little bit of attitude and stuff like that. Whereas with me, it's just like, sure, grandma, sure, grandma. That's great because we spent so much time together. Yeah. So it's it's a great bond, is it, isn't it, between grandmother and grandchild? It, it is. And it's interesting that one of my granddaughters was a COVID baby. So she was born in December right before COVID. Right. So we didn't get to, I didn't get to see very much of her. And then when she was about two, maybe, they moved over here. And for the longest time, if I visited, and because we were all being so careful, I have elderly clients, so I am paranoid about wearing a mask and stuff like that. And I'd go to visit, but she'd she'd sit across the room and she'd just look at me because she hadn't seen other people without masks in your own home. You know, that yes. sort of thing. So, yeah. you know, she's come around now and I get my hugs and everything else. So that's, that's good. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard nice. similar stories. I have a client who had a, their first grandson was a COVID baby. And she told me he's only ever seen four humans in his life <laughs> in person. Like, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. It is interesting. Her older sister, two years older, is a social butterfly. Mm-hmm. But she was also pre-COVID, so she got to go to play school and all the little play groups and yeah, stuff like yeah. that at the rec center. But it's and it's so hard to know, is it just personality? Because personality can vary between siblings, or is it that COVID effect? And so it doesn't sound like life changed much for you after you turned 50, but is there was there any kind of distinct new things that you took on or was life changed in, in any way? I think as the kids got into their older teens, I just started taking on more adventures. And it wasn't in preparation for my 50th, but like on my 48th birthday present to myself was motorcycle lessons. And then I had an older car that was giving me problems. So I thought I got to sell it. And a friend said, why don't you buy a Corvair? So I bought a 65 Corvair, hot red. And just, I was having so much fun through my 50s it was it was just one of those yeah I had this fun car that was a conversation starter you're my second lady biker oh, oh. 
Well, people with neighbors would say, are you having a midlife crisis? And I'm like, there is no, no crisis here whatsoever. <laughs> and are you still on a bike then? No, actually, my knees got bad enough that to keep it in that slightly bent position for too long was problematic. And I got concerned about having to put my feet down suddenly or like something. And I just went, you know, I'm not feeling as, as safe on the bike anymore. So I sold it. And I mean, I, I actually kept it for a year and a half, I think, before I put it up on Craigslist. Yes. So this is something that I observed from my interview with my other biker. I think she's episode 12. Yeah, episode 12. Is that there's a really strong camaraderie among women who are bikers. Like really strong. Yes, I I don't think I, I think I experienced that quite as much as a lot of people because I had a big old heavy bike yeah. and it was big enough that I was always aware, like especially in the first year maybe, of going like, this is a big bike and I don't want to feel the need to keep up with anybody. Yeah. So I did a lot of my biking alone. And then I started joking that if you want a rainstorm or a hailstorm or some sort of storm, put me on the highway on my bike. <laughs> it happens so often. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that's a bad factor of where you live, right? You know, thinking back on when you first started out in the working world, when you were in your 30s, what were you doing? Oh, when I was in my 30s, I was actually starting to make babies. Prior to that, I have had just a a kajillion careers or jobs or whatever you want to call it, hotel business, bar business, those sorts of things. Ended up in elder care, which mm -hmm. was a little bit later in life and loved it. Still love it. Still do some private companion work, that sort of thing. So you, had, you were married with children? Yes. How many little ones did you have? I had three little ones who grew up into three big ones and... <laughs> Despite the teens, it's all worked out really well. I had three kids in three years. So during the okay. teens, I thought that they're going to push each other off the roof at some point in time. And if they don't, I may push all three of them together. <laughs> we, we all survived. So with what you know now in life, thinking back to when you were a young mother, what advice would you give yourself? Holy crikey. Uh, this too will pass. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I shouldn't complain because we actually had a lot of fun. My former husband traveled a lot. He'd be gone for two, three months at a time. And so the four of us became a bit of a unit. You know, we'd do our holidaying in the van and go traveling and do stuff or just even play around at home with friends and tea parties and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So just keep on keeping on, I guess. It's, and I guess also looking back, enjoy it. Enjoy it while you have it because. It is fleeting and, you know, you have, I was going to say older women and now I'm the older woman. I remember older women saying, enjoy it. It, it doesn't last. Yeah. And, and now I guess I am saying the exact same thing. It's just like, yeah, savor every moment. It's, yeah, it's a hard lesson to teach to our, our younger colleagues. So our younger cohorts, because like you, I remember my mother saying the same thing, you know, slow down and enjoy it. and now, when family members have babies, I'm like shocked how fast those babies grow. When I had them myself, it seemed like forever I was doing diapers and stuff. Yeah. Now I'm like, I cannot believe that kid's going to school already. Didn't you just have that baby? You know? When you're a teenager, you can't wait for the years to go by because then you've got high school behind you. you know, yes. It's, yes. You keep on yes. wishing for the, the next stage. Yes. And we, like, we, I used to be proud when someone said, Oh, you know, you're only 15. I thought you were at least 19. I'd be like, Yeah, I look so mature. Now, <laughs> and now it's the other way. When right? it's like, Oh, you're almost 60. I thought you were, you were like in your 40s. I'm like, Thank you. Exactly. Huh. Woman, thy name is vanity, right? That's us at every age. It's, it, yeah, interesting you say that because I, before we came on live here, I had mentioned to you that if the camera's running, I'm going to put a little bit of makeup on. And, and I, I rarely wear makeup. And then, of course, I've, I've just moved. I haven't finished unpacking and I'm walking around going like, oh my goodness, which box would it be in? 
never did find it. And I chuckled at myself thinking, yep, you, there's still vanity in there. As, <laughs> as wash and wear as I like to say I am, I still have that vanity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but it's all about, you know, your own self-image and your concept of how you see yourself and how you want to present to the world. I mean, we, we're hearing lots of studies coming out about the impact of Instagram on, on our younger generations mm-hmm. because everything they do in their life is through the the context of how will this look on social media yeah. not you know not am i having fun and am i learning and who am i meeting it really is but how is this going to look on social media and and i'm sad for them well but the same thing happened to to my generation certainly i mean i started out with with barbie and then it took me till my 40s to understand that with my build in my bone structure, I'm never going to have a 23 inch waist. <laughs> so you say you're still working and do you have any plans for retirement? I did retire. This is retirement. Oh, this is retirement. <laughs> you're working um, in retirement. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, it's, well, you talked about the bikers who stick together. A friend of mine who's a biker likened finishing the nine to five to retiring a vehicle or your bike okay you know if you're going out in the snow you put different tires on you you know you're summer driving you put different tires on you know if you go on in the on the beach in a dune buggy there are different tires yet you go on the racetrack you know you got your your slicks so for whatever's going on that's you're just retiring well and yeah and i really like that analogy of d- define retirement. I can't define it. Okay. Yes. Well, I do know there's some people I know that have retired because I live here in Ottawa and we're basically a civil service town. And it's Freedom 55 is an actual reality for a large proportion of the population. And I think it's unique in a public service town, you know, when you're because of the way the public service works. And uh, once they retire, they become some of the busiest people I know, (laughs) right? They're just doing other things rather than going into the office or, yeah, they're, they're working in their communities. They've got second jobs or what they call side hustles and, you know, traveling and sports and everything. Yeah. So. And it was interesting for me because I have a lot of older people in my life with my, my seniors fitness class. They rage and age from late sixties through to next week, we're celebrating somebody's ninety six. Okay. And, you know, they, they've just, they were so busy pre-COVID with their volunteering, with this, you know, traveling, going to, you know, the, the Elvis get togethers, that sort of thing, just enjoying and doing and contributing. And since COVID, there's a real reluctance to get back into public spaces with strangers. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I know that was just on the news recently out here on the West Coast that some of the groups like that need volunteers that depend on volunteers are really starting to to struggle because their seniors haven't come back yes we're seeing that here as well so i a couple of my clients have, are not for profits and they kind of rely on volunteer labor yeah and they're just it's not there people are not doing it they're not coming out they're not risking their own health you know and and although, for all intents and purposes, life is pretty much back to normal. Like I don't know if you if it got covered outside of this market, but this the federal public service went back to work this week for the first time. You could have shot a cannon down <laughs> our major <laughs> highways at five o'clock up until this week. Well, I say I'm all for it. Like the the sooner we get back to life as normal, the happier I am. That's for sure. I've just always called it the current normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <That's> like... <laughs> okay, so where do you see yourself in 10 years then? In 10 years? Oh, that's a hard one. You know, I, I, I want to say traveling more and doing more stuff. And then, you know, you, you hear about all the issues with airlines and stuff oh. like that. And I mean, there's, you know, they, they say we're going to have another pandemic. We've got the environment to think about. So I, I don't know. I mean, I would love to think that I am still doing some of the things I'm doing, whether it's a little bit of work with older clients, 
I, I love dementia, love dementia care, and I love my exercise class. You know, hopefully that 96-year-old will be 106 and still coming and making us all last because that's what she does. I love my podcast, and I can't imagine running out of people to interview. So I did put 50 people on like you did on the title. So <laughs> get to keep going. So tell me a little bit more about pop, your podcast. How did you how did you come into being a podcaster? I had a friend. My, the podcast is the Boomer Woman's podcast. Up until December of 2022, it was called Two Boomer Women. And I had a, a friend. I mean, we weren't close friends, but we knew each other well enough. And we used to talk several times a week. She had been an investigative reporter. She had traveled. She had opinions about just about everything. And she was so interesting. Our conversations would go down paths that I just would never have imagined. And finally, one day I said, you know, like, this is incredible. We should start a podcast just for the fun of it. Because maybe somebody would like to just pour themselves a coffee and eavesdrop, you know, whether it was her experiences or our combined opinions. Sometimes we agreed, sometimes we didn't agree, but we were always civil. And it was just so much fun. So I did. I'm a bit of a techie nowadays <laughs> since I turned 50. And so I put together the podcast and that we launched in March of 2020, which of course is wow. when. COVID hit the, the waves and she had a mother in care. So many of our conversations were either scared about COVID, people are being stupid about COVID. It was just COVID became the mainstay of our conversations and that wasn't what I was planning. So we, we kept going until about the fall, I think. And then she was dropping off just, I think, partly stress and partly everything. And I sort of limped through the fall and then just said, you know, I like doing this. So I'd interviewed just a couple of friends, just to keep the podcast going. And then in January of 2021, I just said, I'm going to start interviewing anybody that has a message that I can tie into Boomer Women. So it right, became right. the Boomer Woman's podcast. And what would you say, if I pressed you, is the single biggest thing that you've learned from being a podcaster? Everybody's got a story. Awesome. I'm amazed at how many people that, I mean, I find, you know, whether I get approached by someone or I go looking for someone, is someone has taken their story and, and shared it. I, I really appreciate people who say, this was my experience and this is what I'm doing with it. Even if it's just sharing it, you don't necessarily have to go out and fix people with the same story or try to help them. It's just a matter of normalizing, I guess, a lot of experiences for people. Because when you're in the middle of it, sometimes you can't see that life is still going on, you know, and to know that other people are out there in the same boat or have ridden the boat and gotten off it. It's just like, that's the one thing I've learned. And what, what's your favorite interview out of all the interviews you've done? Oh, man. <laughs> That's like asking which which is your favorite child, right? It is, yeah. You know, it's you know one person that, and it, it's funny because he, it, I just went live a couple of weeks ago. I call him a young man because compared to me, first of all, he said something in his bio that it was he, he's a financial advisor, but he talked about learning guitar and the stage fright that he had. Yes. You know what? Wait a minute. Everybody I know has stage fright about something. Let's go with the stage fright. So I really pursued something that he doesn't usually talk about. It's not his business. We had so much fun. I started transcribing uh, interviews. So I've got the words because there was so many nuggets. And I, a couple of years ago, had developed a 12-month journal. And I had like a, a quote, sort of an inspirational quote or something. I had collected 370 different quotes. And I figure by now I've probably got 370 quotes from guests that are either thought-provoking or insightful or something, or just plain funny, that I'm going to start replacing the quotes in that journal. And you should publish it. Well, I just might do that. 
yeah, yeah it's it's on the it's on the list of things to do. Yeah. yeah, I think like people like buying that kind of stuff. Inspirational quote of the day, kind of thing, and this is from real people that you know. It's, it's well, and to just a rary, it's it's like real people's insight. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, sounds like a good and, idea. Yeah, it was so interesting realizing that. Whoa, that you know when when somebody says something that really you go like, whoa, I got to remember that. You know, it's it's pretty cool. So, what are you reading or watching, or what are you binging personally these oh, days? Okay, I'm that person. I don't have a TV. Oh, awesome! Good for I, you. I, I, I've tried Netflix. I tried what's the other one? Disney Plus because of the grandchildren. Yeah. Um, now Disney Plus was kind of cool because they had National Geographic. Awesome. Uh, I, I love documentaries. I like the ones that do, in fact, talk about real things. And there's been a few people who have had shows, and for whatever reason, the platform has dropped them. Mm-hmm. So I'm sort of a little bit tired of all that and i must admit i'm looking forward to settling in and i'm just going to get up with a jigsaw puzzle oh nice <laughs> so that's my evenings a glass of wine and a jigsaw puzzle sounds a, a little bit divine actually okay i think we've kind of already talked about what you're doing supporting and volunteering is there any kind of volunteer stuff you have involved in that we haven't talked about yet no. I spent a lot of years volunteering, everything from United Way to Special Olympics to hospice. And I, I reached a stage when I sold my house a few years ago that I just sort of said, you know, I, I need a break from caregiving, volunteering, all that stuff. However, just last week, the person that I've met recently said, why don't you come and volunteer with me at the Highland Games? And well, that's, that's coming right. up in the spring. And I thought, you know, maybe it would be, you know, I'd love you know, having those things to do, but to do something that's just strictly for fun, you know, it's a volunteer. It's not and an finite, ongoing thing. right? And finite, yeah. yeah. You focus exactly. on a project and when you're done, you they done. Time to move yeah. on. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I'll probably get back into it at some point in time, but uh, yeah. It's... <laughs> Is there an app you can't live without? An app I can't live without? Probably my meditation app. Oh, which oh my goodness. You... Breathe. Okay. It's B-R-E-T-H-E used to be called something else. I've had it for years. And it's how I end my day. I used to do it a couple of times a day. I still use it. Actually, it's, it's funny, after this many years, I know how to do my breathing. And if I'm stuck in traffic, or if I'm late and stuck in traffic, it's just like, can't change this, you know, and you just keep the shoulders down. And then before bed, it's it, I love doing either if I'm relaxing in the evening with a puzzle or something I'll often just have the relaxation music on and then before bed I love having one of the guided meditations and mm-hmm. I rare, rarely hear the end of it I just oh, we'll have a link to that in the show notes oh yeah in fact, our, our last yes the one that I published this week she she had a similar one only it's called calm do you know that one? Oh, I've heard calm yeah and I can't remember I think I signed on to calm at one point in time and then discontinued and I can't remember why so it's not that your first love was breeze that's why <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it was called in those days. I can't remember. It's, yeah. And do you have <laughs> any other life hacks that you could offer our over 50 women crowd? Get up every morning and find something to say thank you for. I'm so fortunate this new place. I, I'm living in a client's home. It's the situation, like physical situation is amazing. And I literally get out of bed every morning and I look at my view and the space and I just say thank you and then yeah just keep on saying thank you say thank you for a green light say thank you from a smile for a smile for a stranger say thank you for getting something on sale it's so what's the benefit to you to say thank you I think it just keeps you grounded insofar as it's so easy to get going with life and you always can find out what you don't have, what you don't know, what you can't afford. And yet you look at your life and, and what you do have, and there must be something in there. And if there isn't, then start with something. As I say, a green light, a walk sign. Like, I just feel it's so important to, to feel the gratitude as often as you can. This has been 50 Women Over 50, a podcast for women whose personal confidence is born of experience. I want to thank my guest, fellow podcaster, Agnes Knowles, for joining me today. 
Five minutes after first speaking with Agnes, I knew she was a kindred spirit. Her pragmatic positivity makes her a role model for us all as we make our way through our 50s and into our 60s. Her sense of adventure and joie de vivre inspires me and gives me hope for more fun in my own future. See the show notes to find out more about Agnes and her show, The Boomer Woman's Podcast, and where you can connect with her online. I've included links to her website and socials, along with ones to some of the other items that we discussed on the show today. Join me again for next week's show when I will welcome author Marjorie Turner, who, after having life-saving brain surgery, found herself paralyzed on her right side. As part of her healing journey, she has penned five Easy Walks books designed to help people with mobility issues get out and enjoy the outdoors. That's next week. But in the meantime, please drop me a rating or a review on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts. Let's connect and create a whole community of wise women over 50 by sharing a link to the show with your friends and connections. We'll see you next time on 50 Women Over 50. I'm your host, Sherry Lynn Starkey.